they needed a, a, a distributor. So they went to Disney and said, would you distribute Tombstone? And they said, yes, we'll distribute it if you get Kurt Russell to play wider. So that's how the casting came about. And just like, just like the Wild Bunch, where 70 people, we had 125 people either fired or quit. Hi, I'm Rob Ward. Welcome to a word on Westerns. Today we have a cowboy with us. This is a guy who's done hundreds of films. In fact, it seems like he does a hundred every year, but maybe it's only a half a dozen or so, but we're gonna find out as Peter Shireko moseys on in to a word on Westerns. Peter, how are you? Rob, good to see you. Good to see you. So I will plop down and before we start anything, I'll do my unbiased plug. But well, we can always edit this out, so it's okay. This is, this is a book for you. Okay, thank you. It's called The Fringe of Hollywood, The Art of Making a Western. Oh, look, at he's got fringe on him right here. That's why I wrote, that's why I put the title in there. Okay. I'm always on the fringe of Hollywood. Whoa. <laughs> My great story on that is a producer bought the book, had it in there. I went in for his office for a meeting. And he picked up the book and he said, have you read this book? This tells you how to make a Western. I said, read it? I wrote it. <laughs> Couldn't well, ask for a better setup. No, and you know, he played Texas Jack in Tombstone. Let's hear it for Tombstone. One of the greatest movies ever. The best Western. Thank you, it is. In years and years and years. And the best of the Wyatt Earp movies too. No question about it. How were you cast in that? Kevin Jarr, who was the writer and first director, yep. we were friends for about three years before that. John Milius introduced us. And uh, I started working with Kevin. Before that, before we did Tombstone, he was going to do a Dracula movie. And he was over in Transylvania scouting locations, and I was going to be the head of the Transylvanian Army and uh, Calvary. And uh, when he was over there, his movie got axed, because of the other Dracula movie that came out like in 91, 92. The, the Coppola one? Yeah, the Coppola one. And, they, and, and Kevin was uh, literally destroyed by it. He, he disappeared for six months. Mm -hmm. And he came back, he called me up and he said, all right, all right, I'm back. And we did a thing called the House of Men Ride. Now myself, Frank Dragani, who if you look at the credits, he was my assistant in Tombstone and Gary Gang, who ran a uh, boarding stable in Silmar. So Gary got Kevin a horse. Frank boarded his horse there at, at Rob's, at uh, Gary's, and I would trailer my horse up, and we would go for a ride once a week, about nine o'clock at night, into the mountains behind Silmar. With, uh, each of us had a bottle of whiskey, I always had cigars, and uh, 100 rounds of live ammunition. <laughs> And Nothing's would, better than alcohol and bullets. No, it worked. And we would ride up the mountains and we would just blindly shoot at every imaginary Any car thing. that would pass by. Sure. And no, no, no. We're way, we were way up in the mountains. It would take us an hour and a half to ride up there. And we would do that and we wouldn't come back until the ammunition or the whiskey was gone. <laughs> and then in the course of that, Kevin kept on saying, well, we're gonna do this. And, and finally he came up, he said, all right, we're gonna do Tombstone. And he wanted me to design all the guns, which I did. And Frank was gonna do all the saddles and then Gary was gonna be one of the Wranglers and bring horses in. So that's how all of that came about. And I worked with Kevin for a year while he was writing the script and he would call me up. Kevin was, you know, we're all strange in this business. We're not real, well, speak you know, we're for not yourself. real, <laughs> real people. So at 11 o'clock at night, once or twice a week, Kevin would call me up and he said, come on down to the house. And I'd go, I'd drive down to Hollywood and uh, he'd have five pages of the script. And then we'd watch a Western movie. And while we're watching that, he'd say, you want a steak? And we'd go out in the barbecue and eat barbecue with steak. Sounds like my normal day. And, yeah, exactly. about <laughs> two o'clock in the morning. And we're doing this and we're having a couple of drinks and we're doing this. And then about three o'clock, we'd finish and he'd say, uh, okay, here's five pages. Take this home, go home and, and design the guns for it. So I made sure that all of the guns were as accurate as possible. 
and all of the guns, if I could match it to the real character, that's what we had. So all of those, all of those, all things, those that's little what touches I do. were wonderful. And I can straighten out a few things. You know, I, you do uh, whatever that thing is—that internet uh, stuff, uh, Facebook, and all that kind of stuff. I keep on reading this stuff <laughs> constantly, and so many people are talking about Tombstone, and so many people have these 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 ideas that I don't know where they came from. Bob Bo's Bell, great guy, nice friend of mine. True he West a, editor. He had a he had a thing on YouTube last week, and I'm reading it, and I'm saying, where did he get all this information from? He's talking about uh, Kevin Costner. Oh, does anybody know the real story? We want to hear it from you. I will tell you the real story well, of, good. of all of this. We were originally at Universal, and that's, that's where we were going to do it. And Kevin Jar wanted Kevin Costner to play wider. Mm -hmm. He thought he was a perfect wider. Sent the script over to him. And Kevin Costner had said, wait a minute, I have my own lawyer project. So he was at CAA, big agency, and he went to CAA and said, I don't want any actor from CAA being on Tombstone. Hmm. And he took his, his, what he had originally was a six-hour miniseries. Right. And then he turned it into a movie. So it was the dueling Kevins mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, then he went to Universal, and he said, if you do Tombstone, I'm not going to do Waterworld. Mm. They threw us out. Now we were stuck. We had nothing. When Kevin, Kevin called me up one morning, he said, okay, we're not at Universal anymore. And I was like, oh, my God, this is Universal. This is a big movie. Done. And he said, no, don't worry about it. The script is good. We're going we're gonna to make it work. Well, about a week later, Synergy picked it up. Andy Vanya. And he said, all right, I'll put the money into the movie if you get Val Kilmer to play Doc Holliday. That's how wow. Val got Doc Holliday. Well, he was perfect. That's, he should have gotten an Academy Award. He, and but, that film came out before the other one, and Dennis Quaid got an Oscar nomination for his Doc Holliday. But Tombstone, which is a wonderful movie, and, and Dennis was great in Wyatt Earp, yeah. but Val Kilmer's interpretation, everybody should have gotten nominated for that movie, but because it was under the radar, and they didn't know what they had, and it was an audience film. They didn't promote it properly. The Just, audience found it. They needed a, a a distributor. So they went to Disney and said, would you distribute Tombstone? And they said, yes, we'll distribute it if you get Kurt Russell to play wider. So that's how the casting came about. And just like, just like the Wild Bunch, where 70 people, we had 125 people either fired or quit mm. constantly. It was, it was a, a... And how did Kevin lose his position as director? Next question. I, I, I heard that from someone. Uh, uh, that doesn't work. No, that it doesn't, doesn't work. really work, no. Kevin wanted to do this movie like a John Ford movie. He wanted to. He wanted the wide shots. He didn't. He wanted people shots. If you look at you look at the searchers, mm -hmm. how many close-ups are there in the searchers? Not many. No, I, I can only recall one, and it was a, a zoom in Where on John looking Wayne. At the crazy girls, right? right. With the crazy girls. Yeah. That's the only one I can remember. That's what Kevin wanted to do. But the system has changed so that they we got to have coverage. Coverage is close. <laughs> one thing that I do when I talk to. Some of these people, I'll go up and I'll go, okay, so listen, what do you want to do? And they'll go, what are you so close for? Get out of my office. And I'm saying, because that's what you want when you're doing, it's a close-up, 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 close-up. It's not the John Ford, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Kevin wanted to do a John Ford sure. style. Sure. And uh, he wasn't, writer, directors. How did he lose his position then? He was already in production shooting then. Four weeks, we shot four weeks for him. And what happened to that footage? It's, it's in Disney's vault. <laughs> John, uh, John Fasano, who, who came in and took over uh, the rewriting when they had to shorten the script down and, and do this to match the, the time, uh, I told, talked to John years ago, and I said, John, they, everybody wants to see all this footage on it. And, and I'm in most of it, too, which is... <laughs> and uh, I You said, were Wyatt Earp in that yeah, one, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and... He said, Disney owns it. Disney has it. If Disney puts it together, and I think in about 50 years, somebody in Disney is going to 
yeah. do something. Yeah, they it's say not, we can make money from this. You know, it, we have a crazy business uh -huh. with, with silly people. Disney, when this, with the success of Tombstone, wanted to do a prequel. Mm -hmm. They wanted to do Dodge City. So John had the script, Dodge City, written. And it was uh, Wyatt and Doc meeting. It was Texas Jack and Turkey Creek. We're, we're all getting together there, and it's a prequel to it. He sent it to Disney. He calls me up, and he said, okay, we're going to do this. And a month goes by, two months go by, three months go by. And I said to John, I said, John, wh whatever happened to, uh, to the script? He goes, you know, I don't know. I haven't heard from them. I'll call him up. He called the, the guy up in Disney, the development person. And he said, I sent you a Dodge City script three months ago, but we haven't heard anything. And he said, I have it right here on my desk. I haven't opened it up because we have commissioned a Dodge City script and we don't want to be sued. And John said, you idiot, that is the script you commissioned. <laughs> Make that guy president. <laughs> so, and, then, and then he, that man, I don't know his name, he got replaced and the script went into turnaround, so it never, oh, man. never showed the light of day. Well, it's cert certainly what we ended up with on screen is a wonderful film. The casting is flawless, the music and the, the costumes, the props, the weapons, all wonderful. Gee, and that all came from me. Okay, yeah. so the new director coming in. George, Yes, yeah, so how did George land that gig? He hadn't done Westerns before. He happened to be in the uh, in the bathroom with this guy who synergy. said, I'm not doing that script. In the Synergy office, uh, Andy Vanya said, I, I, I got to replace him. And he had done uh, uh, one of the Rambo movies with, with Stallone. Right. And uh, they had recommended him. And uh, John Fasano, who was also the rear guard, they were in the office. And then George Cosmatos happened to be in the hallway. And they said, wait, come on. You're going. You're going to Tombstone. Now. Boom. That was it. And he came in. He was a, he was a little, a little strange guy. We had uh, now. Didn't didn't Kurt end up directing quite a Kurt, bit? Kurt, I mean, literally, yes. He literally he it was. He had such a passion for the project that he actually did everything and just gave George and kept science. it going too, and, didn't he? And kept it going and kept everything else going. Shortened the scenes, a lot of my scenes, which I was, <laughs> but which. He, Powers Booth, Powers Booth, who played Curly Bill, and Michael Bean, who played Johnny Ringo. I walk into the bar one night, and they're arguing with the producer, with Jim Jacks, and they're they're standing over there screaming. And I walked in, and they left. So I sat down next to Jim. I said, Jim, I'll buy you a beer. And he looked at me. He says, Pete. Don't ask me for your lines back. I can't give them to you. I can't give Powers Booth back his lines. I can't give Johnny Ring. I can't do that. All right. And I said, Ah, Jim, don't worry about it. I, you know, hey, Ideal Toys was on the set today, and they saw me in my outfit, and they said, it, I was so cool. They're going to make a doll out of me. Well, Jim's his eyes lit up. Wait a minute, I, this is my project. I, I got to get a piece of that. And I say, yeah. but the funny thing is, when you pull the string on it, it doesn't say anything. <laughs> that was basically his yeah, reaction, but not quite good. that way. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, you know, it's again, it's my lifelong dream. I have devoted my life to making Westerns. Mm -hmm. So that is what I do. That is what I care about. So here I am, I'm, you know, working uh, 17 weeks. I'm in costume. Uh, you never change outfits. So what are you talking about in costume? <laughs> this is your look. Well, <laughs> that's why I'm on the fringe of Hollywood. Oh, okay. That's good. Has anybody seen your book? You know, the fringe of Hollywood? Here it is. Look at this. So, okay. <laughs> that's one of my many books. <laughs> well, you did a one-man show on Buffalo Bill. Too. I did. I, on this stage. About uh, about 20 years ago. I, I haven't done it for about uh, about five years now. Why but did you start to do that? I am Buffalo Bill. Oh, I thought you were if, Texas Jack. I am Texas Jack, too. Okay. I have multiple You're personalities. You're delusional. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, it's funny thing about, uh, about Buffalo Bill. We were born 100 years apart. 
he joined the Union Army in 64. I joined the Air Force in 64. I volunteered to go to Vietnam. We both fought in unpopular wars. He died when my mother was born. I, uh, everything that we did was 100 years apart. How He's, old was he when he died? That's, that, that went, that'd be the end of the story here. <laughs> we, uh, I, started, I started acting when he started acting on, on, in New York, in Broadway. And then 10, he spent 10 years of doing that. I spent 10 years in New York. When I came out here, I wanted to do a Wild West show. I'm on my horse. We're gonna do this Wild West show. And as the announcer is announcing it is, ladies and gentlemen, we wanna dedicate the show to Buffalo Bill. It's the hundredth anniversary of his show. I almost fell off the horse. <laughs> I was like, so in, in that way, we're very much alike. I hire people, I pay people. I hire the buckaroos that, uh, those were 40 of the guys who were the Red Sash gang mm -hmm. in, uh, in Tombstone. So I hire people, I pay everybody the same. He paid everybody the same. There's a lot of things that I we I pay did. everybody the same here for doing this. I noticed that, I noticed that. <laughs> and, no uh, favorites, everybody's <laughs> equal. That's right, it's great to be here. That's the secret. Let me ask you, speaking of budgets, these movies that you're, you're doing, and literally, it's like Poverty Row is back. It is Poverty Row. And That's the way I look at but it. But you're doing a lot of them, and it's everybody's dream uh, to, to, well, I, people I know, their dream to be in Westerns. When I, when I do my count, it's how many different shows that we've worked on. So, yeah, there's a lot of commercials, a lot of uh, things like that. But right now, I've just, uh, it's my 48th show this year. Mm. Not all of it. I just sent my customer out to Kentucky for a show called The Frontier, which is on INSP. Mm -hmm. We are doing uh, a show called Wild West Chronicles mm -hmm. on INSP, which I am the consulting producer, or as I like to call me, the insulting producer, because I said, <laughs> what are you doing? And they're hiring, you know, I had the buckaroos. Well, the buckaroos are now older people, and they can ride, they can shoot, but the network says, we want young people, sure. we want people in their 20s. So they bring a bunch of actors that can't ride. Of course. We put them on a horse and we looked at him and said, you've never been on a horse before, have you? He says, no. <laughs> and I said, so why did you tell the producers you could ride? He said, well, I, I thought I could fake it. <laughs> he could, yeah. you know, I mean, there, there are, but it's all the young, it's, it's mm -hmm. what they want. But are you so, having fun? I live my life having yeah. fun. Yeah. No, when I go out, I'm gonna go out smiling and I'm gonna have every right. And how old was Buffalo Bill when he died? <laughs> Five years younger than I oh, am now. Okay. And believe me, when that year hit me, I was worried. <laughs> Let's hear it for borrowed time, Peter Shireko. Thank you for coming, Peter. This was great. My pleasure. Honest. Funny yeah. stuff. Great. Hey, good try. And buy his book, too. Yes, buy my book. Yeah. Okay, and that's it, boys and girls. 